Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you. I came out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. And uh, this video is going to be dealing with the uh, topic of, <laughs> you know, sex and women in the scriptures. Okay. And, uh, you know, what they would call. R A P to the E. Okay, today um, was happening in the ancient world. Okay, and there was laws to govern that. You know, there was laws dealing with that, and it wasn't a big deal like how it is today. It wasn't no big thing like how it is today. Well, you didn't have wives talking about I have a headache like today. Today, it's like you got to ask permission to get you know get some. And then if I feel like it. And that's how these dudes are living. That's how these guys are living. And that's why these the, the divorce rate is so high. Why no one's really getting married nowadays. Because you can just get it for free. By dealing with one of these, these women out here. Okay. And they're not, they're not wives anyway. Okay. But the whole point is that the ancient world was a different time. Okay. Women understood their role. They understood their duty. And they were all about pleasing their men. Okay, in, in this society, it's the complete opposite. And, and the men is all about pleasing the woman, you know, performing for the woman. Okay, this is um, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 21 and 10. It says, when thou goest forth to war against thine enemies and Yahweh thy power hath delivered them in, into thine hands and thou hast, take, hast taken them captive, speaking about the other nations, the heathen, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman. And has desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. See, so we can grab up the heathen women. And we can have them for wives. But guess what? They're, they're secondary wives <clears throat> to the Israelite woman. Right? There's a ranking system. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. And she shall shave her head and pare her nails. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her. And shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife. Why? <clears throat> because when, when we went into a place, we were usually uh, we usually would have to put to death the <clears throat> the men and the woman that knew that knew men. All right. So that means if her mother and her <clears throat> her father and her mother would have had to been put to death. Okay, that is, you know, what happens in war. Okay, and ultimately, you take her as a wife. Does that mean that she wanted to go with you to be a wife? No. Why would she want to go with you when, when you just put to death her, her father and her mother? At this point in time, she really hates you. But based upon what? Based upon the fear, that's why she was going with you. Okay, this is, this is, this is how it was. This is how it was. A lot of you guys are still American. You're still Canadian. You're still uh, really your Edomite mindset. You have that Edomite mindset, that the mindset that Esau taught you. And then you try to, you know, tie that to the scriptures when it does not mix. OK, but there was a process. We had to let them, you know, mourn their parents, mourn their mother, mourn their father, you know, for a month, a whole month. They had time to mourn. OK, we didn't just, we weren't just like savage beasts, just grabbed them up. No, no, there was. They had time to mourn because their parents just got put to death. Their family got put to death. Their nation was slaughtered in the war. Okay. Whether it's a Moabite, an Edomite, an Ishmaelite, this applies. Okay. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her. What does it mean going unto her? That means to have sex with her, to lay with her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife. And it didn't say if you get consent, if you get verbal consent, it didn't say that. OK, so you can just put the pieces of the puzzles together, man. It's very simple. And it shall be if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her uh, at all for money. Thou shalt not make her, her make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her. What does it mean? Humbled her. When you when you sleep with a woman, you humble her. Right. If you're giving it to her right, guess what? She becomes humble. She might, she might uh, clean the house right after. She might cook you dinner. She might rub your belly, you know. You see what I'm saying? Rub the feet thereof. 
You know, she gets she gets in a humble spirit. Because what? When they take it, guess what? They're submissive naturally. So it's a demon on them when in their regular life they want to be dominant dominant. They want to uh, tell you what to do and whatever. That's a that's an actual that's Satan on them. But while you're in the midst of of uh, of, of um between the sheets, right? They're in a submissive spirit. And if they're not, then that's just a why would you even want that? How can that even turn you on? You know, something's wrong with that woman. Okay. She's trying to be dominant, but you know. You gotta show her who's boss, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's the way it goes, man. So it means what? You humbled her. Okay. So you can't sell her for money. You can't uh give her away because what is that? That's adultery. That's adultery. You could the only thing you could do is give her a bill of divorce and, and let her go, man. Alright? If a man have two wives, uh oh, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, uh, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit uh, that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated which is indeed the firstborn. So you see, so the, the the children had rights regardless of how he felt about the mother. Okay. You can't say, okay, I hate my BM and Ray, 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 so I'm not going to give my son any of this inheritance. No, that that's going off. All right. But he shall, and that proves that we can have multiple women. This is in the, this is in the law. Okay. We can have multiple wives, but he shall acknowledge the son of the, the hated for the firstborn by uh, of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the of the firstborn is his okay so that's the right of the firstborn but dealing with the the first part that i read a lot of you israelite groups talking about you can't deal with of the nation women well, well this proves it right here that we can it we just i just told you if you see amongst the captives a beautiful woman and that was the captives of the other nations and the apostle Tahar just did just did a thing where he showed you know some images you know an image of a particular edomite woman asking if you want to deal with it and come on bro all these guys if they say they're not going to deal with fine women and it might not be that that might not be your speed that particular woman might not have been your speed but <laughs> let, me, let me let me find something. Let me type in something. Let me type in something real quick. I'm gonna type in something. I'm trying to type in full, fully dressed. Okay, I don't want them to be you know naked or whatever the case may be. But look. See, so you see an Ishmaelite that looks like this. Well, she kind of looked like a light-skinned end of or a Latin. She looked like a Latin tribe. You wouldn't deal with her? You're not going to deal with something that looks like this? Come on, bro. Let, let, like, if, if she's single. Let's see. Let's pair adventure. There's a woman that looks like this and is single. Okay? And she wants to deal with you. She's looking at you. And she wants to deal with you. You're not going to deal with it? Now, that's a heathen. Come on, bro. It's a joke. All right? It's a joke. We know how Jake is. Jake likes women. That's why everywhere Jake goes, they, they populate their seed in that particular land, man. That's just the way it is. Okay? And it's and it's not going to change in the kingdom. We're going to get their their um their women. The scripture says we shall boast ourselves all on one. Well, let's get that. Let's get that. And really, they say that because they're trying to appease the so-called black woman. Because they, they're still, they're still, there's a bunch of simps in the nation of Israel, man. Even that know they're Israelites. <clears throat> this is um, Isaiah 61 and verse uh, 5. It says, And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of, alien, of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Meaning we're going to have these other nations for slaves. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord of Yahweh, men shall call you the ministers of our power. 
ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast that yourselves. What's the glory of men? What's the glory of men? Let's type it in, man. Because we know the glory of women is her is their hair, right? <clears throat> the glory of a woman is her hair, right? This is uh first Corinthians eleven and verse fifteen it says, But if a woman have long hair, it is glory to her, for her hair is giving her for a covering. But if any man seem to be uh, contentious, we have oh no, no, no oh, excuse me. See, glory of the woman, man. But we see that the the hair of the, of the woman is her glory. <clears throat> right. Okay. This is it. First Corinthians eleven and seven. It says. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. That's a cut for you, Sakari guys. For as much as he is the image and glory of the Most High, but the woman is the glory of the man. So when it says here that we shall boast ourselves in their glory, right? In their glory, we shall boast ourselves. Part of that glory is the woman. Okay, so we're going to boast ourselves in their women. Okay, we're going to have the finest of all the women. You see how Jake, they'll be dealing with some water buffaloes when they get with Edomite chicks, you know, and sometimes it kind of gets you mad. I'm speaking for myself. It's like, yo, why, why that? You know, a good looking Jake, man, he tall, you know, muscular, and he be dealing with like, a, yo, an Edomite that she, you can see in her face, she knows she's not worthy, <laughs> you know, but because Jake is so thirsty and the market is so messed up that they have to result to that. But in the kingdom, it's going to be the exact opposite. We're only going to get the finest of the of the heathen women the finest okay these women won't even compare to, to what we're going to get in the kingdom man you see what i'm saying to you but i just put that out as a, as an example you know of um you know you know very well that these israelites i don't care how uh militant black they are they, they'll deal with a heathen if they're fine enough and they want to speak to them and they want to deal with them Okay, that's just in men's nature, but um, <clears throat> let, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, let's go. To, let's deal with um, Ecclesiasticus, thirty six and verse twenty four. It says, "He that getteth a wife, beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest." So, did women have the same rights that they have today? No. Were they crying and, and protesting about my body, my choice? No. Okay, they understood that they were a possession. They understood that they were under the man. They understood that. That was common knowledge. Okay, that's why you went from your father's house to the husband's house. And that's why your father gives you away. Because before that, you're a possession and you are owned by your father. And then you are owned by your husband. And guess what? Back then, they didn't choose their husbands. Their parents might have gave them, their father might have gave them some input. Oh, do you like him? Whatever. That might have been a, a case, as in the case of um, uh, Rebecca. They asked, did you want to go with this this individual? Right? But if the father was, was going to make a decision, which which was, you know, more, more most likely the case, okay, he had the final say anyway, regardless, okay? Whether she liked the dude or not, okay? And how do you consummate marriage? You consummate marriage through sex, Let's prove that. Let's deal with Isaac and Rebecca, man. Let's deal with Isaac and Rebecca. Oh, excuse me. Rebecca, Rebecca. Uh, might be spelled differently in the Old Testament. Um, let's type in Isaac. Okay, 
hold on, give me a second. Let me look it up right now. Genesis 24 and 67. This is Genesis 24 and verse 67. And this is when uh, when Rebecca first meets Isaac. This is when she first meets him. It says what? Isaac marries Rebecca. Okay, it says uh, Genesis 24 and 62. And Isaac came from the way of the well, uh, Lahiroi. For he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant has said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's house, Sarah's tent. And that was the custom to cover your face with a veil, you know, before you um before you know you you dealt with the woman, she would have a veil over her face. Okay, and Isaac brought uh and then that's proven by um because rach uh, uh leah did the same thing when she de dealt with um with jacob okay and isaac brought her into his mother's sarah's tent and took rebecca and she became his wife what did he do with her in in, in the tent he laid with her he, he he slept with her in the tent okay and he loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's death you see that you see that so his his uh his mother sarah passed away and what did he do he took rebecca into his tent and they became and she became his wife it didn't say that he um he there was a big ceremony Th that was a custom but that wasn't necessary what consummates marriage is sex okay that's what consummate, consummates marriage. So like I said, right? It says that when you get at the wife, you get you get at the possession. The father passes the woman on to the husband, okay? And, and the woman doesn't have the final say. The father has the final say, <clears throat> okay? And guess what? If the if the man wants to deal with her, you know, that's he can do what he wants. That's his, his wife. He can do what the hell he wants to do. You understand what I'm saying to you? And nobody would listen to him. No, he had sex. I didn't feel like it. And I had a headache and I wasn't feeling. I'm like, what? Well, that's your husband. That's what they would say in the ancient world. Well, that's your husband. Now, in this day and age, in Esau society, the serpent society, right? It says now a husband can um, assault, you know, you know what I mean, his wife by doing that. That's a great offense. And you can get arrested for doing, for laying with your, with your wife without her consent so this is this is why would you get married what is this this is this is fool this is foolishness you know it's complete foolishness in, in the society all right and here's another example this is exodus 21 and verse 7 it says and if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant she shall not go out as the maidservant the men servants do do you agree with this law, Captain Tazariak? You emotional uh, Israelites out there, you Christianized Israelites out there. Do you believe? Do you agree with this that a man can sell his daughter? An Israelite man can sell his daughter. Do you, do you agree with that? To another Israelite, <laughs> if she please not her master, who ha and we're not saying that you have to do that. That's, that's your choice. Okay. That's your choice. You see? 
And obviously you can't do that in this day and age. I'm talking about in the ancient world. That was your choice. And that's what these people don't get. Oh, see, they're telling people to sell their daughters. No, you, 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 you gotta say it like Nate, you moron. Okay. We're speaking about the ancient world. That was how it was in the ancient world. And if you were in the ancient world, if you were in this time and coming out the, the, the wilderness with Moses and you wanted to do that, that was your choice. And you want wicked for doing it because it's within the law. All right. In this day and age, obviously you can't do that. If you do that, you're an idiot. All right. And I wouldn't want to do that because, you know, it's, you know, it's just not something that I would want to do. All right. But let's say you let's say your daughter was wicked. <laughs> a demon. Let's say your daughter was an actual demon. What a hey. Maybe you might want to profit, man. Get some shekels, man. Get that demon out of your house, man. All right? I can see that. That makes sense to me. All right? If she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, then she, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing, a, 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 seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. In other words, he could he can marry her if he wants. All right. And if she's a serv her, his slave, his servant, what, what, what is she going to say about that? You understand what I'm saying to you? What say does she have in that? Nah, I don't feel like it. Come, come on now. It doesn't make any sense. No, there was no they didn't have any power. And even whether they wanted it or not, the, the master could have did that. OK, you see what I'm saying? And if he hath betrothed her unto his son. He shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. And guess what? He can marry her, he can have her marry his son or have her, his son marry her. Okay. <clears throat> so anyways, that's the whole point, man. All right. But that's not, that's not it. That's not it. There's more, but there's more. Okay. There's judges 21 and 21. All right. Dealing with uh, the, the tribe of Benjamin. Okay. Where. They were taking down the 400 men, so they desperately needed wives to repopulate. Okay? So what did they do? Was it said, oh, that's wicked. You got to pray to the Lord to get a wife and take her out on a date. And no, no, no. It wasn't. No. They had to do what they had to do. Okay? And it says, therefore, they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, go and lie in wait in the vineyards and see and behold if the daughters of Shiloh come out to, dan uh, come out to dance in dances. Then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you. You see what I'm saying? Catch you need to, to take hold. And the same word that's in Deuteronomy 22. We're going to get that. Okay. And catch you every man, his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. So you're supposed to grab a wife up. And go, no man is supposed to have be without a wife. And it shall be when their fathers of, uh, or their brethren come unto us to complain that we will say unto them be favorable unto them for our for our sakes because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war for ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty right because they're, they're snatched up all the women okay all of them women getting snatched up all right and it didn't mean that the father was going to be happy about that but according to the law, he couldn't do that. He couldn't put the man to death. That he would be committed murder. Okay, he couldn't uh, go and beat up the man. That that's that's against the law. Okay, because the man really what he had to do was was pay the fifty shekels of silver. And I don't even know if Benjamin paid the fifty she shekels of silver. They might not even have paid. Okay, and the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to their number of them that danced, whom they caught. And they went and returned unto their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. You see, so according to their number, meaning what? All 400 men took wives. All of them had at least one wife. Okay. From those, from that instance. It didn't matter if the guy was ugly. I'm like, he ugly. His nose is too big or whatever the case is. They, they didn't have no say in that. Okay. So this this westernized mindset does not mix, does not um, uh, jive with the scriptures. Okay, it does not coincide 
with the scriptures. And a lot of you Israelites still have a, a Edomite type mindset dealing with the scriptures. This is Deuteronomy 22. I'll start at verse 22. All right. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel, because that's adultery. All right. And the same thing goes for a woman that is betrothed, which means a woman that is engaged because she's promised to a man. It's still considered adultery. If a man that is a, uh, if a damsel, excuse me, that is a virgin, be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, what, what's the problem here? She's betrothed unto an husband. There's a reason why this is written. It's not just there for no reason. You can't take this out and say, if a damsel that is a virgin be found in the city, and, and a man lie with her. No, 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 you can't take this out. This There's a reason this is written, and it's very specific. Anyone that has common sense knows and understands this, but you you, you world-friendly, want to be liked by the world, you 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 soft uh, americanized israelites will not understand it because you refuse to accept the truth if a man that is, if a damsel excuse me that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband comma and a man find her in the city and lie with her then shall ye bring them both out unto the gate of that city and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. Well, hold on. If, if she's being grabbed up, right? What's the problem here? The problem is that, which it didn't say that she was being grabbed up, but the problem here is that what? Is that she's betrothed to an husband, clearly, right? That's the problem. Not the fact that he found a woman and laid with a woman. The fact is that she was betrothed to an husband, okay? And ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not out, cried not being in the city, and the man, meaning she was with it, okay? Meaning she was with it. And the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away uh, evil from among you. So it clearly tells you that's considered his wife, the man's wife, even though she was betrothed. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her, uh-oh, and lie with her, right? Then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. See, why? Because she was betrothed. That's the problem. You see what I'm saying? He forced her while she was betrothed, meaning she was engaged, meaning she had a husband. That equates to adultery. That's why he has to be put to death. It's very simple, man. Now, let's get 28. It says, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed. Now, we're dealing with which is not betrothed this is a different this is the same scenario except the woman is not betrothed okay and lay hold on her they could they could have used the word force her same way and lie with her and they be found then the man that lay with her shall give the damsel's fathers 50 shekels of silver right which is the dowry dowry okay and she shall be his wife and because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Very simple. Okay? That's it. Very simple. So it's not hard to understand that one scenario, uh, she was betrothed. Which means, she, in other words, she had a husband. The other scenario, she was not betrothed. Both scenarios, she was being forced. 
point blank period so there's a law for that what's the law that you have to pay the dowry you got to pay the 50 shekels of silver and i'm not sure that might be even a little bit more than the, the average dowry okay i'm not too sure but <clears throat> at the end of the day the whole point is that you have to give them shekels of silvers up and you cannot put her away you have to keep her as your wife forever all right so it wasn't just a man just hopping is in the alleyway behind a dumpster, you know, and grab the woman in the alleyway and do his thing and then run off into the the, 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 the darkness. No. OK, there was there was order. OK, and now I want to deal with the fact of Michael, right? This, the daughter of Saul, which Saul, what did he do? He betrothed Michael to King David. Right. He betrothed Michael. to uh, king david and what did he do later on later on he started to become jealous of king david so he tried to put him to death and you know what michael was cool back then michael actually loved king david at first you know and she helped king david escape and all that you know but then 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 what did he do then what did saul do right being wicked he said david also took because <laughs> what was david doing they was co collecting wives man <laughs> You could just, just read uh, 1 Samuel's 25, 39 on down. Okay, he was collecting wives. Okay, and Abigail hasted and arose and rode. This is verse 42. And rode upon an, an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahi, Ahinoam of Jezreel and they were also both of them his wives listen david had plenty of wives man okay he was collecting women like how you collect uh shoes okay you know or collectible baseball ball cards man all right <laughs> i'm not saying they're on the level of shoes or baseball cards i'm just saying that's how that's how king david was collecting them all right but saul had given michael his daughter David, uh, David's wife, to Falti, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. So you see, so what Saul, that was wicked. He gave King David's wife that he betrothed unto King David, that was betrothed to another man, right? Which is wicked, which that was a straight up adultery, okay? So now let's deal with 2 Samuel 3 and verse 13. And it says, uh, Matter of fact, I'll start at 12. It says, And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, Well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou bring thou first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see my face. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife, Michal, which I espoused to me for an for an hundred foreskins of the of the Philistines. Right, because David worked for that. David had to murk had to uh, murk about hundred uh, hundred Philistines, man, to get their foreskin to, to, to bring it to Saul, man, to show him listen, because that's what Saul said. All right, he said, well, actually, he said 50, and, and David brought double, okay? So he worked for that, man. He actually risked his life to get that wife. <laughs> you see what I'm saying to you? He risked his life. So, yeah, he wants to collect, okay? So he said, bring me, bring me my wife. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even Fathiel, Fathiel, the son of Laish, because that was an adulterous union anyway. And her husband went with her along weeping behind her to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go return, and he returned. Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do, do it, for the Lord hath spoken of David, saying, Well, anyways, that's the point. Okay, the whole point is that he took Micah to wife, and guess what? She didn't. She hated David at that point. You know, Saul was put to death. David was taking the, the, the kingdom. 
All right, and she she hated David at that particular point. But did she have a choice? No, David King David had a choice, and you know it was she she gave him attitude when he was dancing um, before the Ark of the Covenant, and uh, you know you know the end dub attitude. And what did King David do? He didn't accept that. What he did, he put her in the chambers, man, and she died without child, man. You know, so he locked her up, man. Okay. See, this was a different time. This wasn't now, you know, they, they, they can talk smack, roll their neck, you know. But in that time, listen, man, it was a different time. You get locked up in the dungeon. So anyways, with that, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, the Malarns to the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to Yahweh out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom.